Distribution is an important marketing activity and refers to the location where consumers can buy products. Within the marketing mix, distribution is known as place. If products are not available in convenient locations, then consumers may not have the time to search for them and therefore will not purchase them. Distribution includes how customers can access products and how products are transported from producers to customers. The different ways of moving products from producers to customers are called channels of distribution. A distribution channel is the route taken by a product from the producer to the customer. There are a number of distribution channels that businesses can choose from. The method of distribution used by businesses has changed significantly over the years, especially with the growth of technology that's enabled digital distribution. A distribution channel represents a chain of businesses or intermediaries through which the final buyer purchases a good or service. There are three distribution channels here. The first one is the producers selling directly to the consumers. That's a direct method. Second one, the producers selling to the retailers and then the retailers selling to the consumers. That's the modern method. And finally, the traditional method is where the producers would sell to the wholesalers and the wholesalers sell to the retailers and the retailers then sell to the consumers. Now it should be noted that more than one distribution channel can be chosen and many producers do this. Selling directly to consumers. Here are some examples of how producers may do this. Could be via shopping parties, online, telephone sales, direct mail, door-to-door -door selling. Selling directly to consumers means that the producer keeps 100% of the selling price. We may often find that they will therefore charge lower prices. Selling directly to consumers is beneficial as it means that the producers higher profits can finance more spending on advertising, product development, or even website development. When a producer is selling directly to a consumer, it often means that promotions are sent through the post, directly to customers, or via email, inviting them to purchase the products or services. This method can be quite time consuming, especially if customers are only buying small quantities. Producers would also have to arrange delivery of the goods, which can be complex at times and expensive. Retailers are businesses that buy products and sell them directly to the consumer. When a producer sells directly to the retailer, it means that the products will now be in more places, places that are convenient to consumers, which means more potential customers may come across the product. Retailers can add value. They might include additional services such as breakdown cover, gift wrapping services and warranties. A disadvantage of this type of distribution channel is that small businesses may find it challenging to be able to have their products stocked in these retail outlets. Selling directly to wholesalers. When producers sell directly to wholesalers, this can help distribute their goods. A wholesaler is a type of business that purchases goods in bulk from a producer and then sells them to retailers. Producers can sell directly to a wholesaler, then consumers or retailers can buy the products from the wholesalers. This distribution channel is good if they make lots of a particular product, as they are able to sell it in bulk. If a producer sells directly to a wholesaler, it means they do not necessarily have to communicate a lot with the consumer, as a wholesaler will already have customers, so products can reach lots of potential customers in a short space of time. It can also lower distribution costs, as the producer does not have to distribute products to many different locations. This also means if retailers buy from wholesalers, then the products may end up being sold in many different locations. The disadvantages are that if consumers just purchase from the wholesaler, then it means 
that they may get less customer service in comparison to other channels. Another disadvantage is that the wholesaler will also require to be paid as the producer is not selling directly to the consumer. It should be noted that some producers are their own retailers. The likes of Apple, Samsung, Chanel control their own distribution, display and sales by running their own shops. This is a key example of a multi-channel distribution. Just a reminder to like, share and subscribe as I do post regularly. These are some of the elements that are involved when a producer chooses the appropriate distribution channel. Control. Some producers want to have full control over the distribution channel. For example, producers of exclusive products may not want them to be sold in outlets that they may think might not align with their brand image. The nature of the product. There are different types of products and these different types of products may require different distribution channels. The market. Producers that sell goods to mass markets are more likely to use intermediaries. Cost. Businesses will typically choose the most effective distribution channel. They may also prefer to have direct channels selling directly to consumers. Many producers have websites so they can sell directly to consumers in order to keep costs low. There have been changes in distribution to reflect social trends. The way that goods and services are sold is very much subject to change. Many of these changes reflect social trends. Businesses need to be aware of this and make changes to distributing products and services where required. Here are some examples in terms of the changes in distribution. The building of American style shopping malls in the UK. The growth of charity shops. Shopping becoming more of a leisure activity. Let's continue to look at this further. The most important new trend is the development of online distribution, also called e-commerce, which is the buying and selling of products and services over the internet. There are two types of online distribution, business to consumers, B2C, and business to business. B2C, business to consumers. This is the selling of products and services directly to consumers. Now, we can't talk about online distribution without mentioning e-tailing. E-tailing involves the activities related to selling goods and services over the internet. E-tailers do not have any physical stores that customers can walk into. Examples are Amazon and Alibaba. Most e-tailing involves ordering of products and services online and taking delivery of it at home or work. In addition to this, Click and collect services are becoming very much a trend with customers collecting their products in store or at a convenient hub. There are benefits to e-tailing. Businesses can access customers around the world. E-tailing enables businesses to compete with larger businesses without requiring a retail space. In regards to B2C, most big retailers now have online services some small businesses may lack the ability or finance to build and maintain a website or at times have a website but would like to be given more exposure and use more established platforms such as Amazon, Etsy, eBay to sell directly to the consumer. The use of apps to purchase products and services has been on the increase. This is where consumers will download an app, make orders and purchase directly from there. Some retailers will offer incentives such as discounts if consumers download the app to make the purchase. Business to business. This involves businesses selling to other businesses online. For example, it involves transactions between a producer and a wholesaler or a wholesaler and a retailer through an online sales portal. This is a small market. Businesses can use specialist software to purchase resources. The software would help find the cheapest supplier for the business to consider. Changing from product to service. In many Western economies, the tertiary sector has grown. 
As a result, businesses have had to focus on the distribution of services. Most services are sold directly to the consumer, so businesses have had to carefully consider how they are directly selling these to consumers. Businesses have had to adapt to the change of technology and consumer buying habits. We'll take a look at some examples. Firstly, the change from people purchasing the hard copy newspaper to now businesses allowing them to purchase newspapers digitally. Moving very much away from the physical game with the PlayStation, for example, 